Okay, so here we are finished and uh, I'm going to read off some things from Wikipedia while it spins around. This is the battleship Issei. It was actually uh, completed in 1917, but it played no role in World War I. And by World War II, it was pretty much outdated, so it barely did anything in World War II. And eventually in 1945, the Americans sank the thing and then it was scrapped. Uh, the thing is tw almost 30,000 long tons. Uh, the length was 208 meters. Uh, let's see, propulsion, four propellers as you can see, you could go to 23 knots which is uh, around 26 miles per hour or 43 kilometers per hour. And then obviously you can see a, a bunch of paired uh, weapons here. The big ones are 14 inch guns, uh, then there's 20 14 5.5 uh, inch guns. It's interesting how they're on the side as well. And I guess that's uh, all I care to learn about. So. That's good enough. Later on, it was actually converted a little bit into a hybrid carrier. They got rid of the rear and then put some uh, airplanes on the back. But again, it wasn't a really uh, successful design. It was just outdated, you know, too old. Yeah, so images there of it in reality. And I think this is a rendering, but uh, it's in color. So that's why I pulled that up. Okay, so there are definitely some issues building this thing. And uh, let me go over this here. Uh, first, you do have a bunch of parts. I think there's three pieces that go into the hull. This is the front one, and that thing wouldn't lay flat, so I just didn't put it in. You don't really need to put any of them in now that I think of it. I think they're there for ballast, like as if you want if you want to actually float this in a, a pool or something, uh, you need the weight to actually make it sink into the water. I'm pretty sure that's what these things, things are. So you don't really need it, or I don't need it, because I'm never going to float the thing. There's a bunch of extra uh, turrets and stuff, I guess, for different battleships. They're using this uh, part, you know, part variation to make a different battleship. And there are a few extra pieces which are nice because these little anti-aircraft cannons are very easy to break. I bent one just pushing one on, so it's nice that I have a whole bunch of extras there because it will be easy to break. And also, there's an extra crane. Uh, an extra crane piece right there uh, and I guess you could have the option of using this thing up here or the one with the actual I think that's a radar array but correct me if I'm wrong okay so it's nice that you have extra parts 
Now actually, can one thing that also went wrong is somehow I lost a piece. I don't know how it happened, but it, it was lost. See this front piece here? It's meant to have uh, lines going around. It's supposed to be an identical one in the back, and that's for the sticker flag. I don't know where it went, so I just used a paper clip. So a one millimeter uh, shaft uh, paper clip works fantastic. And now when I uh, ship this back to where I'm home, I can take it out and not fear it breaking. Same with all the other stuff. I, I'm, I'm going to take this out, take that out, so it doesn't break during uh, transportation. I do fear that these will break, though. But I didn't glue the whole structure, uh, this whole tower structure in. And that brings up a, a note. You have to assemble this tower structure into the hull before you put in the smokestack section because uh, these little sight uh, aiming devices will not clear if you, if you do it the other way around. Okay, uh, you could pose this thing in many different ways. These uh, cannons here can be posed up and down a little bit, but I just pretty much have them flat against uh, you know the lower piece. And there are they are glued. I don't I don't want to lose them. Same with these. You do have a few degrees of movement, but I ended up gluing all of them because I feel it's just going to get lost. And there are no extras of these side side cannons. All right. So uh, I didn't glue the main turrets because they seem to be trapped anyways. That can't fall out. This can't fall out because it's trapped by that. Right. So everything is trapped as far as the main turrets go, which is great. Um, okay. Uh, the lifeboat, I decided to change a different uh, color from the deck, and I basically skipped all the stickers except for the flag there. Because the thing is very three-dimensional, this deck, you can see the, the panel gaps, and uh, you have all these other three-dimensional objects coming up. So I don't think the paper sticker would stay on there very long anyways, so I think it's best to just paint it. I would rather have uh, you know, the paint be there forever, even if it's not the greatest paint job than a sticker that just peels up and looks ridiculous. I do find that the whole control tower really cool. One, two, three, four, four decks of uh, observation and whatnot. And then it's got these diagonal shafts going through these decks, which is interesting. Uh, okay, uh, this one is not glued in. This anchor, as you can see, you can uh, post it in different ways. But now that I do this, I'm thinking I might have to glue that in place. This one was glued, and unfortunately it must have moved before it totally set. Uh, luckily I can spin it a little bit there. All right, so unlike my first attempt, I did actually use the, the Tamiya paint washes, uh, panel liners, in the uh, window portholes and brown on these little details before I painted it. In fact, I actually haven't painted this yet, like clear coat matte that is. I am going to matte clear coat all this because, you know, the paint will chip off eventually if you fondle it. So, uh, yeah, clear coat that stuff later. Okay, uh, what other issues? Boy, this is a real delicate thing to try to put together. Uh, this whole, these angled pieces are all one piece and it has to go around this pole. The pole is too big, so you got to file out this hole or you're going to break it. I've put too much glue here, it looks a little ugly. A lot of the holes basically I had to use like a needle file to uh, drill out uh, this one also because if you try to push it in I think you're going to break them and if you do push it in it will never come out without breaking anyways. So uh, keep that in mind. I guess that's it. Yeah, alright so just be mindful you're going to probably have to needle file a bunch of holes and uh, here I put this sticker on here. That's the Japanese for Issei. The other, the first part of the sticker is Chibi Maru, the whole line of these uh, deformed egg like uh, ships. Okay, well, uh, speaking of the other first attempt, now this one I did matte clear coat before I added the, the uh, panel liner, and that's why it all bled out and looks horrible. But this is just a destroyer, so. No big deal. And it is nice that the destroyer is still a little bit smaller than a battleship. You know, in real life, the battleship would be absolutely huge compared to a destroyer. But I think, we're, you know, this looks pretty good. I mean, they're cartoons, right? So that's cool. Uh, you will notice uh, these things are so tightly packed like this. There's no chance that this will spin. 
Uh, this will only spin like a few degrees before it hits the, the, the mast there. See, there really isn't much articulation in the turrets. You could pose them sideways, but they would look kind of ridiculous, right? So this, see, only a few degrees. And that's fine. I'm not here to play with these things. It's a model kit, not a toy. Although it looks like a toy. So let's go back to uh, letting this thing spin. And uh, yeah, if you want to slow down the previous part of this video, watch me deal with all the issues about fitment and gluing some parts in place, that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead. But uh, I think they're really cool kits. And I'm going to build a bunch more of them. So if you like this stuff, we'll see you in the future. Thanks for watching today.